Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of Psalms, Psalm 37. I haven't identified a single verse in here because it, uh, uh, it really, the, the whole of the psalm speaks about what happens, what we as God's people should be doing when the wicked prevail, when tr- times are troubled, when difficulties arise. And that's really what Psalm uh, 37 is all about. In the past, I have looked at that and I have found individual verses that have encouraged me here and there, but I've never really put all of it together in a comprehensive way until just recently. And I thought it was something that was very important for us to consider at this particular time. We do live in troubled times. We live in a time when evildoers have risen and they have gained control of much of our society. They have influenced the society more than the church has influenced the society. How do we as the church, how do we as God's people respond? That's what Psalm 37 is all about. Because you see, in David's time as well, there were these same influences. People who are, uh, who are evildoers, people who are, uh, as he says, wrongdoers here, are, are people that do sometimes gain the upper hand because of their, their power, because of their influence, because of uh, a variety of things. So how do we respond? Well, there are a lot of ways that we tend to respond here, and this particular psalm answers some of them. First of all, we tend to think that we can't trust God in the midst of it, but he tells us, trust God, do good. We need to be doing that. He also tells us that we need to delight ourselves in him rather than in all of the sins and all of the uh, vices that are prominent and prevalent in our world. He says we should commit our way to him and trust him. Uh, we, he, we're, we're to be still before him and wait patiently for him. Now these are not easy things to do when, when evil prevails in the society, but they are the commands that we have right here. He tells us to refrain from anger. I'll confess to you that that's very difficult for me. When I see the, uh, the, the ways that evil is perpetrated upon the, the world around us, when I see innocent children being sucked into the, the evil vices of this world, I, I get angry. Uh, hopefully, I'm angry and I sin not, but I can't say that for sure. I get angry because it's, it, it's, it's wrong. And they are destroying uh, young people in whose image God made, uh, in whose image, um, or the young people uh, who have been made in God's image. That's what I'm trying to say. One of my big prayers for my children, or rather my grandchildren, is that the Lord would surround them, protect them from much of the evil that is in this society, in this generation. And I just pray that he'll open their eyes to see what is right and what is wrong, and they'll be able to choose what is right. Now, in the midst of all of that, uh, in, the, in a time of, uh, of when evil prevails, we're in a world where there is a lot of inflation, and it may cause many of us to worry about how much we have and will it last until the end. But he says he gives counsel here also, and he says better is the, is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. And so, uh, again, his, his counsel in troubled times is, is many of these things. One of my favorites, and I have, um, I have um, relied on this verse for a long, long time, even outside the context of the whole of the psalm. But in verse 25, He says, I have been young, and now I am old. I can identify there. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging bread. Now that's a promise that we have. In the midst of troubled times, in the midst of difficulties, when evil seems to prevail, our job is to trust him. And to recognize that whether it is 
Um, <clears throat> whether it is the social values of our world, whether it is the political power of the enemies, whether it is the economic hardships that we might have in troubled times, he's the one who's, who we need to trust in. He's the one that we need to rely on. We can trust him, just as David did in that particular day. We don't know exactly when David wrote this particular psalm. All we know is that this particular psalm is a psalm for troubled times, a psalm when, uh, when many people uh, despair and many people uh, turn away thinking that God is not trustworthy. He is. He is. Let, that, let this psalm be a source of great comfort and joy to your heart. Father, thank you for the uh, testimony not only of David and so many others in Scripture, but thank you for the testimonies of others down through history who have, who have survived tough times, who have seen dictators rise and dictators fall, who have seen oppression and persecution. And we recognize that those things may be on the horizon for the church in this generation. But grant that we will be able to trust you. Grant that we will be able to rely upon your faithfulness and your goodness. And in spite of what's going on around us, help us to do good and to be faithful to you. We'll thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.